All right, John, let's continue on the note of the quarterback. Now, they had the perfect man here for that system in Tommy Frazier, but he is gone. The new man, Scott Frost, takes over, and Husker coach Tom Osborne says it looks like a perfect fit. You know, you draw a guy on the blackboard, um, he's pretty close to what you draw for this offense. He's about 6'2 six, 6'3, two 215. Uh, probably can run under 4'6 uh, consistently, and he has a good arm and a good mind, and uh, he's a contact player. So uh, we have high hopes for him. And that means that all the opposition is going to continue another season of trying to outrun the big red train. John? <laughs> the Cornhuskers. Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. 72,000 plus people still make it the third largest city in the state. And it's the Cornhuskers that unite this state. They bring a joy that whirls across the heartland like a frivolous dust devil. The opposition today comes from East Lansing, Michigan, a proud tradition themselves as they come in to the land of the Big Red. Hello again, everybody. Keith Jackson along with Bob Greasy. Bob, uh, since we're talking about Nebraska, let's consider the strength of this team as they kick off for the first time defense. Well, this defense was one of the top five defenses in the country last year. Eight five-year, eight, eight fifth-year seniors returned. This, my partner picked this footage out. It's a quarterback playing on his... Uh, <laughs> The two defensive ends are the top uh, players on this team, the best group of defensive ends that have ever been in Nebraska. If it takes championship defense, Keith, to win a third national championship, they've got it. Well, now, Michigan State was thrashed roundly by Nebraska at East Lansing last year, causing first-year coach Nick Saban to accuse them of quitting. They stabilized. They went to a winning season. They looked like a better football team. Well, they are, and uh, Nick has said that this team has improved greatly from that first game last year in East Lansing. The first winning season, the first bowl game in five years, they're excited about the prospect. They're missing five players because of academics today. He's got a lot of young players going up against a lot of veterans. Uh, he needs a lot of turnovers and some special teams to help. Tom Osborne trying to lead his Cornhuskers to a third successive national championship. No team in college has ever done it before. The Nebraska Cornhuskers will receive the kickoff from Chris Gardner of Michigan State. Gardner, a junior out of Plantation, Florida. Deep to receive for the Huskers are number 21, Damon Benning, and number 30, Amon Green. They are the one and two tailbacks for Nebraska. So you've got savvy and speed back to receive the opening kickoff. The sun popped out just as we read it for the kickoff. It's been raining off and on for the last hour. The kick is into the corner of the end zone. It will not be returned. It was a bad angle for the receiver, Green, to take it. And he let it go, and they'll bring it out to the 20. So here's the man of the hour, the story of this afternoon, Scott Frost. Junior. He went from Wood River, Nebraska to Stanford, played there, came back, set out a year, makes his first start today. So he is a native son, come home at 6'3, 215 pounds. He is a junior. The first step of 1996 for the defending national champions with Schuster at fullback and Green at tailback. Green with the ball, a sweep to the right. Lineman pulls out, he gets around the corner. He's at the 28-yard line for an eight-yard pickup, and it looks the same as it did 10, 12, 15, 20 years ago. Chili's backs and receivers, the starting lineup for Nebraska. Amon Green is bigger this year at 220 pounds. He has taken off about 12 pounds during the course of the preseason training, but he's bigger and stronger as a sophomore. This is Green again. First down at the 34-yard line. The offensive front is what makes this wagon roll, led by Aaron Taylor. They were worried they were going to take a great guard and move him and make an average center out of him, but his coach says he's coming along just fine. Zadiska, the younger brother of Rob, who was here and won the graduate scholarship a year ago. Chris Dishman, 
is a 300 pounder. Taylor's 300, and Eric Anderson is 305. That's why they pull the wagon. This time the hit is right at the line of scrimmage on green, and it is number 22, Reggie Garnett, a senior of Akron, Ohio, leader of the Michigan State defense that made the hit. Garnett is not all that big, but he's very active. He's 6'1", 230, and uh, when you look at him, you don't think he weighs uh, 230 pounds, but he hits like it. Marvin Wright is the leader of the defensive secondary. He's a senior, number 18, and will cover a lot of territory back there. So it is second down and nine now for Nebraska. And the play is into the middle, and they will stay there until Michigan State makes them quit. This is Brian Schuster, the fullback, with his first carry. Keith, for uh, Nebraska, the game stories, they have the best running game in the country last year. Michigan State had the worst run defense. And for Nebraska, avoid the first game overconfidence. This is their first game. Michigan State has a game under their belt. John Vedro comes way wide to the bottom of the picture. Now you see a different formation and you see movement. And we could see Scott Frost's first pass of 1996 as he rolls it out and keeps it and runs into a bunch of white shirts. He was a little bit hesitant about which way to cut it, and he cut it right back into traffic. Ike Reese and Ray Hill got him in a hurry. Well, you didn't see his first pass, but you did see his first option, and this is a big accomplishment for uh, Michigan State defense. The, the, the real test was that offensive line against Michigan State's defensive line. One of the worst things about an opening game like this in front of a crowd like this, you come out of that tunnel, you feel like a warrior, then you're ready for the first play, your mind turns to oatmeal and you can't get a breath. And that's probably where they are right now, a whole bunch of them. Nigia Carter is the deep man, and Jesse Cush is back to punt. Got a little bit of pressure on him, but he gets it away, and it's not all that long, but it's a tail dragger, and it takes a favorable bounce for Nebraska. Rolls inside the Michigan State 15 and all the way down to the 12. So there, Michigan State will take over first down for their first possession of the ball game on a 46-yard punt. Todd Schultz had a very good start at quarterback for the Michigan State Spartans last week in the win over Purdue. He's 6'4", 217, junior out of Morris, Illinois. No turnovers in the ball game last week for him. He ran a very controlled offense, one that was very successful and looked quite good. Today, he will face, obviously, more pressure than he did last week. But he looked like he was ready to play last Saturday. And from the 12 on first down, they hand the ball inside to the sixth-year senior, Dwayne Goldborn, and he picks up a yard or so. Chile's starting a lineup for Michigan State. The backs and receivers include Goldburn. He is 5'9", 200. You see Derek Mason, number 80. He's highlighted for a reason. He's out there for a couple of plays at least with a broken wrist. His right wrist was broken last week very early in the ball game, and he's trying to play as a kick returner and as a wideout. He's a big-time player, Keith. This is Goldburn again, and he will get it up across well, just about to the 15-yard line. So look at Wistrom, number 98. He is unblocked. Uh, the play goes away from him, but look at the hustle. Defensive end from the opposite side catches that play. The offensive coaches don't draw that up. He is not supposed to get that play. It is third down and seven, and Cedric Irvin has checked into the ball game for Michigan State. He's the freshman out of Miami who had the big week, scored four times last week. The pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage. The quarterback was knocked down by Wistrom, and... Uh, as he got his pass away, it was tipped at the line of scrimmage. The offensive front, Dave Mudge and Flozell Adams, the two tackles are going to have very hard days here in Lincoln, Nebraska. But they're good, and they may very well be up to the challenge. Now, however, they must block for the punt. And in to do the punting is Paul Edinger. He's a freshman from Michigan State out of Lakeland, Florida. In uh, high school, he had 46 of 51 kickoffs that were touchbacks. So he's got a big leg. The punt carries to the 41-yard line, where it's accepted by Mike Pullman. And Mike Pullman, who has been struggling with a full groin muscle throughout the preseason training, will bring it back to the 49-yard line. 
That was a 44-yard punt. Tonight on ABC, James Marston, one of the stars of Second Noah at 8 Central Time, then the concluding night of the story of the world's greatest rock band ever, the Beatles Anthology. Tonight, after Second Noah, here on ABC. Nebraska comes up again with same lineup, the Green and Schuster behind Frost. This time, the starting point is a little better. This is what the defense does for them. Field position. Frost's first pass as a Husker quarterback is off the hands of the intended receiver, Sheldon Jackson, a sophomore from Diamond Bar, California. Jackson was open. Frost missed him. Well, it wasn't that wide open, Keith. There was a couple of receivers downfield that were covered. Jackson was the outlet, and it would have had to have been a, a pretty good throw to hit him. But Tom Osborne calls all the plays. A steady diet of running plays in the first series. The uh, Huskers take over on their second drive in great field position right at midfield. Second down and 10. Hand it off to Green. Pulled away from the first man that got a grip on him, Chris Smith, and he drags him up to about the 46-yard line. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, Todd Schultz came off to the sideline. Uh, he took a good shot on the knee, that left knee. And what I've been told here is that he injured that left knee in, in the summertime in the weightlifting room. Uh, hasn't really come around for him. And that last play, he threw the football, got rolled up on, limped off to the sideline. So the doctors have checked him out. Uh, they haven't indicated whether or not he'll be in the ball game when they get the ball back. Keith? I don't see anybody warming up. He doesn't act too, uh, like as much like he's hurt either, does he? No. Nope. Third down and six. Frost again, throws this time to Vedral, and Vedral, a senior wingback, makes the reception, but he is uh, short of the first down. Ray Hill made a good defensive play for the Spartans. And so once again, the Michigan State defense hunkers down, and Nebraska very got a punt. Very impressive. Michigan State defensively last year, not very good. This year, Dean Pease, the defensive coordinator, has got him going. A lot of young players. Keith, if you've got a trick in your kicking game for Nebraska, this might be an area you may want to try it. Jesse Cush is in to kick it. He had a 46-yarder a moment ago. Nigia Carter, number 81, is the deep man for Michigan State. He is a wide receiver with good moves and good speed. Snaps on the money. High kick this time, and uh, fair catch signal, but there's no way that Carter could get to it. Well, it starts to roll. These punters <laughs> have got to love this artificial surface. Oh, yeah. They hit, they hit, and this just takes off running. 33 yards on the punt, but very effective. Here's a look at the last possession for Michigan State, and look at Schultz. He's going to get hit from the top of your screen. I think it's the defensive end. It's Wistrom. Wistrom coming around, and he just gets hit. He's kind of he's short, short leg in it, but he's back. And it's Irvin. Cedric Irvin is now at tailback for Michigan State. The ball is just at the 10. And it's fumble. And it is rolling around under a pile of players, and I think Michigan State may have recovered it. Looked like Mazzolo may be the man who got on the ball. But Nebraska had a shot at it, and the man couldn't pull it in. And Irvin winds up with about uh, two yards. Well, that's the tailback fumble in the freshman. Here's a look at that defensive uh, for Nebraska, Tomage and Wistrom, the two outstanding defensive uh, ends. The linebackers are good. And Ralph Brown is a true freshman starting in his first game in Nebraska. That hasn't been done since the, after, the, uh, after the Warriors. Goldberg is in. In motion, pass thrown to him, makes the catch. About the 14 yard line by Eric Stokes, a senior from right here in Lincoln. Good player. Free safety. Michigan State, uh, their stories, they need a big day from their kicking teams. They need some returns, they need to get some uh, fumbles uh, and turnovers and turnovers and turnovers. They need to play mistake free on offense and turn the ball over on defense to have a chance in this ball game. It's third down and about seven from the 14-yard line. Schultz back, pressure coming, gets it away to the sidelines, intercepted, threw it, ball got away and threw it right to Mike Minner, the strong safety. 
And Minner follows it in. So again, the defense has handed it over to the offense down at the 22-yard line. Schultz comes slipping off. There's man coverage, tight man coverage, and a lot of pressure. That's the Nebraska recipe. That's Jason Peter, 55, that got a piece of him. That's just a poor throw. He had some heat on him. Minner had two interceptions last year. Great field position for offense for Tom Osborne. Green, the eye back. Schuster's in front of him. Scott Frost looks like he might be changing the play. Sits in behind the center, gives it to Green. Down to daylight, down to the 10. First down, Mike Austin made the tackle. He went to the right. He got behind Anderson and Zadiska and found the daylight. After a pick of a Take a look at Schultz getting repaired. Watch these two offensive linemen. They're not only big for Nebraska, but they are agile and they can move. Quick feet, 75 is Dishman. True is 77, who gets a great block on the linebacker. That's where we talk about the offensive line at Nebraska. Not only big, but quick. Just short of the 10, first down. Scott Frost, the quarterback. Touchdown, Cornhusker. Sets up the offense, and in two plays, Nebraska scores. Chris Brown for the extra point. Federal holds. The kick is good. Adam True, the tackle, does the snapping. From behind the defense, fake to the fullback, an option. True, 77, gets up through the hole. Down the breast. Chris Brown will kick off for Nebraska. Derek Mason will go back to receive it for Michigan State. Remember now, he has a broken right wrist, so he'll have to handle the ball between his arms and his body and hold it in his left hand. But I don't think he's going to want to return. Well, it hung up in the wind. He's on the goal line. He'll take a shot at it. Looking for a little help. And he's out of bounds at about the 13, 14 yard line. Take a look at Schultz on the sideline. He was injured on this play. It's Wistrom number 98 that's going to come around. Being blocked to the outside there. Right here he gets hit as he's throwing the football. And he limped off again for the second time. Ornstein now in the ball game. He must have had that knee hurt, Keith, uh, coming into the ballgame, as Lynn said earlier. Well, Gus Ornstein is a transfer from Notre Dame. He's the number two man in the quarterback alignment at the moment, but he may have just stepped into the hot box for the afternoon here in Lincoln, Nebraska. So he wanted to play football. He's got his chance. It is Nigeria Carter, the man to the bottom of the picture. It's Goldborn and Garrett Gould lined up behind Gus Ornstein. And from the 11-yard line, or just outside the 10 is where they put him down, he is dropped behind the line of scrimmage by Jason Peter. So the Michigan State running back that time did not get to the line of scrimmage. And you can't uh, run slow developing plays and run sideways because that quick defense will get you. He sometimes, and I'm talking about Ornstein now, sometimes when you're not the guy, the pressure's not on you all week. If you're not the number one quarterback, sometimes you go in and you're more relaxed if you're replacing the starter. And off is inside, this time a little daylight for Goldborn, and uh, Dwayne gets it out to the 15-yard line. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, Bob was correct, as I said. He did injure that knee before coming into training camp. 
and the doctors and trainers have said he has sprained not the same ligament, but another ligament in the same knee. That's why they're icing it down. They're not going to put him back in the second half. They will re-evaluate him at halftime, Keith. Cedric Irvin checks in at tailback now with Gould remaining at fullback and moving out into a slot position. So they spread the field with this offensive alignment on third down. Ornstein's pass is drilled to the numbers and the catch is made and that is a very good pass and a very good catch by Derek Mason who's playing as we told you with a broken right wrist. But he caught the ball against his body, and it may have been a good thing because the coverage was good. Well, and the coverage was provided by the true freshman, the first true freshman that started in years, the first game here. And you don't normally see a defensive back, especially a corner, a true freshman, but that's who they threw at and expect that some more. And they got their first down with uh, Urban back in the backfield. Ornstein back to throw again. He's a little taller. He's got a man, Mason. And Mason used that sore right wrist to haul that ball in. It takes courage to do that. But he got it, and he got a first down at the 41-yard line. And the matchup, Keith, the matchup is, is, is Mason against the true freshman. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, plays a lot of man coverage. Just going to set the kid out there and let him play and hope that his pressure gets to the quarterback. That time it wasn't good enough. Octavius Long has come in now at that wide out position and Mason has left the field. But he made the play. First down, 41 yard line. Hornstein gives it to Urban. This time the freshman tucks it away a little firmer. And holds on to the ball as he is taken down by Jamel Williams. He gained three yards up to about the 44, close to the 45. They get a second down and six and call it the 45. Yes, it is a sold out stadium. 209 consecutive home sellouts for Nebraska. Back to that spread formation again with Urban and Reese. Split backs behind Ornstein. Schultz hurt a knee. He's out. Ornstein with the ball. Play action over the middle. It's good. And down goes Octavius Long, number 20, at about the Nebraska 42-yard line for another first down for Michigan State. Ornstein looks very calm and very poised, Keith, in the pocket. As I mentioned, occasionally when, when, the, when the first when the starter gets hurt, and the backup comes in. He's not expecting to play. He's relaxed all week. He says, my attitude is, hey, the first guy's hurt. I'm just going to do the best I can. And, and he's playing very well right now. But again, Offside on the defense. The penalty is refused. First down. Never saw the flag. But they turn it away anyway and take the play for the first down. 42-yard line. The officials today, mixed crew, Randy Crystal is the referee. Barton's now taking some heart off this offensive surge, hand the ball away to the up man, Travis Reese, and he'll move it inside the 40 to the 39. The interior people for uh, Michigan State, Shaw, Beard, and Rosalem, but it's the two tackles, Mudge and uh, Adams, that are so critical because they're the ones that need to buy the time for that quarterback. Orange came back again and again. He has Peter after him, and he's got him. Throws him down, and he is down. That is not a fumble. The referee Crystal right on it, but the loss is back to the 47-yard line. So Jason Peter got loose in the middle and took him down. Jason Peter is uh, wearing his brother's number. They were both in the defensive line. Here you go right here. Watch as Jason Peter, his brother Christian, and he played the defensive tackles last year. His brother graduated. He switched his number, just runs by the, the uh, guard, and just uh, it's his first sack of the year. Goldborn comes in at the tailback position now as they go to a shotgun with Ornstein. Looking at third down and 16. And Michigan State calls timeout. It is Derek Mason who called the timeout. There was something wrong with the people on the field or the alignment.
Monday night, an ABC News special, John Stossel revealed some startling information about us. We the people. Are we scaring ourselves to death? And it's a classic NFC matchup as Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers battle the Philadelphia Eagles on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. All Monday here on ABC. Is Lynn going to be at that game? It might rain. It didn't probably rain. Yeah, take, uh, only for training. <laughs> Ball is at the 47-yard line, third down and 16 now for Michigan State. Hornstein flushed out of the pocket and thrown down for a loss back to the 49 by Jamel Williams. Jamel Williams is a defensive back playing linebacker. That's what they've done at Nebraska. That's where this enormous speed has come from their core of linebackers. Well, that's very true, and Hornstein could not outrun him, and he couldn't throw it because there was nobody open. And Paul Edinger is on the field. At least the offense moved the ball some. With their starting quarterback injured, Ornstein came in and did a good job. It is Mike Fullman and Damon Benning deep. Edinger's kick, good high hanging kick. They're going to let it go, and it takes a Nebraska net to go into the end zone. And we've got 3.16 left to play in the first quarter with the Cornhuskers leading 7-0. They take over at the 20. With the rain early on today, you truly had your sea of red, if you will, here at Memorial Stadium, red and white. The rain has stopped, the sun is out, and it's quite warm. Damon Binney is the tailback as they come up for this possession. And Scott Frost steps in behind Aaron Taylor. Chris Smith bouncing around in the middle defensively for Michigan State. Give the ball to Binning. He's been hitting out of there with authority to the 27. Hanging into Ray Hill. Down he goes. But seven yards is worth the punishment. Take a look at the offensive line again. The same two guys on the left side. Watch as they pull. In 75, that's uh, Dishman. Watch the cut block he gets on the linebacker right here. So good, the lineman out at getting out and chopping block and getting the linebackers down. Joel Makovica has checked in at fullback now for the Huskers. Heading again. Searching along the line of scrimmage, gets over the 30. He's got a first down for the Cone Huskers, and we checked in with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, before the game began, the Nebraska football team dedicated its season to their backup quarterback who passed away in the private airplane crash, Brooke Barringer, and his number will not be worn by any player this year, number 18. But under every jersey, the players from Nebraska will be taking a little bit of memory of Brooke Barringer, the guy they dedicate the season to, with them. Uh, and there will be uh, an award at the end of the season Named after him for the for the most courageous backup, Keith. Did a fine job when he was he exemplified yeah. the team spirit. He, he was, was a real well tragedy. liked. Yeah, he was a good kid. He was the pilot of the light plane that went down. This is Scott Cross turning it back inside from the 31 out to the 38 at seven yards. When you're getting seven yards on running plays on first down, you're in pretty good shape. Well, he's not going to be a Tommy Frazier, and he won't do it the same way. But if you were with us at the beginning and heard Tom Osborne he said if you could draw up what you need for this offense you'd be pretty much drawing up Scott Frost he likes his height he likes his, his throwing ability he likes his toughness and his speed this kid uh, I think this kid is going to fit into this offense pretty nicely Keith tailback Damon Benning and this time the Spartans handle him short of the first down. They've got to get just past the 41 to get it. Uh, Scott Frost's mom, Carol Mosica, was a member of the United States women's uh, Olympic team, 1968, Mexico City. He's got some pretty good bloodlines. His dad was a halfback here at Nebraska, and his the mom, mama, mama mom threw the discus. Yeah. Yeah, mom threw the discus in the Olympics and won a gold medal in the Pan Am Games in '67, and she uh, coached him. In fact, she coached the Nebraska women's track and field team. You're right. This is Benning for the first down. He's another one of those strong-legged, twisting halfbacks from Omaha. They're everywhere. 
The top three tailbacks here at Nebraska are Green, Benning, Sims, and they're all from Omaha. Here's a look at Eric Anderson, the right tackle, Keith. He he will play second in the shot put his senior year at the state track meet. There's a guy in that huddle that won the state track meet. Who, who do you think it is? Right there, Scott Frost, the quarterback, won the state shot put championship. This is the fullback, Makovica, a sophomore out of Brainerd. And he runs in traffic just like his mother did, like a hammer. And he moves it on down to the 43-yard line. And you got a timeout called. One of the Michigan State Spartans is shaken up on the play. That'll be Reggie Garnett. They've already lost their starting quarterback. They don't, they don't lose need him. to lose him. He My is, goodness. He is their top defender right here. So time is out for Reggie Garnett. Twenty two in the middle there Garnett this is his thirty fifth start at Michigan State. It's like somebody falls on the back of his legs. He led this team in tackles last year and he is their leader. Defensively. The Cornhuskers are leading by a score of seven to nothing with twenty seconds remaining in the first quarter and Reggie's got to come out of the ball game for the time being. Todd Schultz in re injured a knee. From a weight room injury, he's out. And into the ball game, replacing Garnett is Tyrone Garland, a junior from Cliffwood, New Jersey. He weighs 230 pounds. His defense is already a little bit thin, Keith. They have lost four starters this year to academics. They've actually got linebackers playing defensive end. Yes, they do. And a freshman linebacker, a freshman starting at linebacker. Sec second down and three. And this is Benny. He's got the first down. Put it at the 36 yard line as he simply runs over the right side and they can't get him. It's 37 Garland. He just came in for Garnett. Plays off the block of Dishman and gets over and gets a piece of the deck. After one in Lincoln, it's 7 0 Nebraska. As we start the second quarter of play, Nebraska leading Michigan State seven to nothing. The Cornhuskers have the football first down at the Michigan State 37 yard line. They started this possession from the 20. Scott Frost has behind him Damon Benning, the eye back, and Joel McAvicka at fullback. The blitz. The option outside of it. And Benning takes the football down inside the 35 to the 34 yard line before Ike Reese can bring him down. Keith, you don't blitz Nebraska very often. And I'll tell you why, because an option team, you don't blitz it. It forces you to really go vanilla. Todd Blackledge said in the pregame show about all the different formations and all the options that they run really forces a defensive team just to be vanilla, play zones, and not do much because if you get one on one out there with an option guy, he may break it. You need. Four guys uh, around the ball carry. It'll be second down and about seven. Play is in the middle to the 30. Now let's join Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, college football tradition set it apart from every other form of football. And here at Nebraska since 1925, they've had three stadiums. But the one thing that's gone from each stadium is this horseshoe for good luck. And every team player comes through the hallway here, touches the horseshoe for good luck, then takes a field. I think over the last couple of years, it's worked out very well for him, Keith. Well, we lost one game in three years around here. The mules in the front have had a lot to say about what the thoroughbreds in the back have been doing. This is Scott Cross running it up the middle and picking up the first down. Took the snap and just banged up the middle like a fullback. I think he wants to prove something too. He'd like to absolutely prove to his teammates that I'm a tough guy too. I can get in there and take it. Well, the snap's going to go directly, but watch from the left side as the two same linemen are pulling. That's Dishman and True. It's like a quarterback draw trap from from shotgun formation. More things you can do with a running quarterback. It's another first down just inside the 23-yard line. Cross back. Goes underneath on a screen to the fullback, Macapica. And that's a good defensive play by number 
Well, I'll get his number for you. Here are your first quarter statistics. Uh, as I look at the numbers, uh, the time of possession at the bottom uh, really doesn't show you the dominance of Nebraska. 95 total yards to 46. The one turnover that Michigan State had, Nebraska turned into their only score of the ball game. up in the middle first down three yards then second down not much that time maybe another yard so they're they're kind of pulling them all pulling them all pulling them all inside and now look up this drive it's been 11 runs and one pass here's a look at Nebraska's offense last year in the big eight they led in everything in the nation they were first in scoring and rushing averaging 400 yards per game on the ground on third and six Frost is on the center. Goes outside to get time. Got his man. And the ball's a little late getting there. And Vedro, uh, oh, Holbein can't pull it in. Brendan Holbein. He ran away from the pressure and uh, had Holbein for a moment. But couldn't get it to Holbein could have caught that, Keith. It wasn't that poorly thrown. It's, it's, uh, I, I kind of chuckle when I think of Scott Frost being out at Stanford under Bill Walsh his first two years and in that passing scheme and then being here at Nebraska and Tom Osborne, the little, the nuances that are different, it's, 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 it's more than a little. This may a of, fit him better. A lot of rolling out, yeah. 35-yard field goal try from Chris Brown, a sophomore from South Lake, Texas. He's good. And so 11.59 to go in the first half, and Nebraska extends the lead to 10 to nothing. Today at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, the Fighting Illini will be hosting Southern California. Louisville meets Penn State. TCU will battle Oklahoma, and Duke will take on the number three team in the country, Florida State. So check your local listings for the game on your ABC station and the games available from your cable operator today on ABC Sports. Chris Brown kicking off. 10-0 Huskers lead. Ball sails beyond the field of play. That's the best way to keep it away from Derek Mason. Well, he, he got it in his hands, but he can't run it back. He is one of the all-time greats in the Big Ten right there, Mason. Run it back once. Yeah. Number 22, Reggie Garrett, the middle linebacker who came out of the ball game, has a sprained medial collateral ligament in his right knee. The team doctor, Dr. Herb Ross, said they'll take him in at halftime, evaluate it, but uh, they do not know whether he will come back and play in the second half. Keith? It doesn't look like it, Lenny. Reggie Garnett, it's a big loss for Michigan State. This is Michigan State's best starting point for a possession. And the first down play with Goldborn carrying is uh, didn't net much, half a yard maybe. John Hesse brought him down, or John Hess. He's a fifth-year senior from Lincoln. Local boy, John Hess, middle linebacker. Keith is a fifth-year senior. He's in graduate school. In fact, he's graduated in 11 semesters. He's majoring in psychology. Cedric Irvin, the freshman, is at tailback. Has the ball. Reverse it. Nagia Carter. Nothing to it. You will not run the ball east and west against Nebraska very successfully. It's just so quick. I mean, you think, well, maybe if you start off in one direction, all the Nebraska players will be over there, and then you can come back the other way, but they're so they are taught so well. Get, uh, the man who made that tackle is Ryan Terwilliger. He's yeah. replacing Terrell Farley, who yeah. is suspended. But the defensive end slowed it up. Wistrom and uh, Thomas. Third down and 13. Dump it off for a screen. Goes to Urban. That heavy traffic for a little while and just gets tumbled out of bounds as he picked up the better part of five or six yards. And so the Nebraska defense one more time. This defense, Keith, is going to be strong all year. And we mentioned they are eight 
fifth-year senior starters. So they are an experienced group, and they are quick. Paul Ettinger is in the punt. It'll be his third of the day. He's at 44 and 49. Mike Fullman is the deep man. Pretty close, but he got it out of there, and now Fulton will give it a go. Not bad for a guy with a full groin, huh? Touchdown, Cornhusker. shape. <laughs> <laughs> the 40-yard punt, 62-yard return. Chris Brown out of Edwards Hole. Blue snaps it. Take it go. At 10.42 to go in the first half. It is down to Rasta 17 and Michigan State nothing. Well, as what normally happens on these are missed tackles. You look at the opportunities. There's one, two. Then there's three more. One, two, that's five opportunities. Gould is 45. That's three more he runs away from. Long gets back in it again. That's his second try that he's missed. I think he's run past or out of the hands of nine different tacklers. He did this last year. Fullman returned punts for touchdown. So it is Mike Fullman with the big noise so far in the ball game as the Huskers build their lead to 17 to nothing. Derek Mason with the deep man for Michigan State. And he still hasn't had a chance to return it. As the ball shoots through the end zone, it will be first down Michigan State at the 20. Chris Brown, big leg. And it's a and it's a key, Keith, if you can keep the ball away from him on kick returns. Chris Brown, as a freshman last year, came in and did a very nice job. And he's doing that again today, keeping the ball away from Mason. Well, the defense has set up the first touchdown with an interception for Nebraska. The offense then got a field goal on its own. And the special teams now has scored a touchdown. So all three factions have got into the scoring. Golden Goldburn in the backfield. Ornstein gives it to Goldburn. And he gets around the corner. And close to a first down. That's really the first big ground gain they've had. They had 11 carries and five yards coming into that play. And uh, they almost got that much on that one run. Some good blocking downfield. Uh, Mosalem, the guard. Uh, Adams, the tackle. Closell cool. Adams is worth talking about, Bob. He's 6'7", 325 pounds. Best guy on that line. Second down, about a foot. Colvin will have the first down. They just surge forward and get it out at the 32. Who are you talking about, Keith? Flozell Adams. Go with the flow. 6'7", 3'25". He's the best offensive line. He's a right tackle. Normally, you want the best, your best tackle at the left side, but he has a hearing problem in his right ear, so he plays on the left side so he can hear out of his left ear. Travis Reese at fullback, Cedric Irvin at tailback. Freshman scored four times last week. Creeping around now with the pass receiver. Ornstein goes the other way, and it is incomplete. And it was a pass thrown to Derek Mason, and he, the ball was up high. He had to use his hands. And he has only one good hand, remember? Yeah. And he could not make the I think if you're going to throw it that hard to Derek Mason, you've got to throw it right in his numbers yep. and let him wrap his arms around it and use his chest to stop the ball. Ornstein's first miss. He's now four out of five for 44 yards. But they're trying to do the right thing, and that is get the ball out to Mason and Carter. They're two wide receivers who have some ability to run them. 
You got Kelsey and Rucker now in at the defensive end positions for the moment. And that's fresh legs. Ornstein is hit just as the ball is thrown. And again, it's thrown too high for Mason. Uh, he has to go up with his hands again, and he can't make hand catches. Well, Keith, you're, abso ball. you're absolutely right. He can't. As a matter of fact, I was in the locker room talking with him and his receiver coach, and he was trying to tell his receiver coach that it's okay to catch a ball with your body and your arms, and his coach is nodding. But like Bob said, if he's going to do that, it's got to be low so he can protect the football, actually trap it with his bad hand, and then use that good hand to clamp down on it. He cannot go up and catch a bullet straight through because I think the pain is too much for him. And the padding on his, on his cast. Third down and ten. Hornstein out of the shotgun. Throws low inside, well short of the first down. So Michigan State will punt it. That was Josh Kerr, the tight end, coming across, but he was down on the ground after about six, seven years. Well, is, is uh, Mike Coleman pumped up? Is he going to back there again? Yes, he is. Coleman, a senior out of Roselle, New Jersey. He just returned to the last kick for 62 yards and a touchdown. I think I'd be kicking it away from him. I think I would too. I do believe I would. Right at him. Lost his footing. When he made the catch, the ball was down around his knees and he never regained his balance. A 36 yard punt and a six yard return. Tomorrow night is Emmy night on ABC. Paul Reiser hosts the 1996 Emmy Awards with Oprah Winfrey and Michael J. Fox and the biggest stars on television. Find out who wins the Emmys tomorrow night after America's Funniest Home Videos on ABC. Ike Reese in this ball game for Michigan State has made eight tackles. So the outside linebacker has been very busy. This is Amon Green back in there now after uh, Damon Benning had his turn at tailback. And Green starting. Trying to get a, down to the sidelines and get some help around the corner. Couldn't find much help, and Michigan State handled it. Nebraska is used to scoring a lot of points, 35 points in every game last year. In fact, the closest win, and they did win them all last year, was by 14 points. That was their closest win, and that was right here against Washington State. Tom Osborne's teams have now scored over 10,000 points for the opposition's 3,900. This is Brian Schuster. Up to about the 35. One of those fullbacks. You know, all of the fullbacks, Tom was telling us, all five of them are walk-ons. Makovic, all five. Huh? All five of the fullbacks <laughs> on the roster for Nebraska are walk-ons. Makovic, who graduated last year, and Joel's brother, uh, was a walk on too. So I guess they give them all the scholarships to the tailbacks and the fullbacks and just do the dirty work. Hey, we can get those guys anywhere. Here's Green looking for the first down, and he's short of it. At 7.15 to go in the first half, and the Huskers are leading 17 to nothing over the Spartans. And here comes the kicking team. Fourth down and two. Najia Carter goes deep for Michigan State. Jesse Cush, two punts, 46 and 33, but the 33 was killed inside the 15. You got 10 Spartans up there. Looks like it could be a block, huh? They might try. Oh, they peel off. Not a very good kick. Well, they got him thinking a little bit. He spun it off the side of his foot. It's out of bounds at about the 29-yard line, 32-yard punt. Timeout, 6.28 to go first half. <laughs> first down at the 30-yard line for the Michigan State Spartans as they, again, try to get some offense going. And, uh, boy, that's a funny-looking shirt, but uh, 
So far, they have been able to move the ball. They have, Keith, and, and they've done it, as I said, on all three phases of the game. The special teams have chipped in with a touchdown. The offense really has uh, moved it, but sputtered. The only time they scored was when the defense set them up inside the 20-yard line, and they moved it like 20 yards for the touchdown. But I'm not surprised. Uh, offenses usually sputter early in the season. Hornstein, by time, drills his man. You give him time, he'll hurt you. Ball is not loose, but it's recovered by Michigan State. Nigeria Carter lost the ball. This catch, Derek Mason could make, and he did. Ball bounced right up to him. And now Mason is down hurt after saving the play for the Spartans. The sky's beginning to fall on them. Well, if they lose Mason, they'll, they've already lost Garnett with a knee injury. And Schultz, the quarterback. And Schultz. Right here, Carter's going to drop it. Mason is in the area. But he gets slammed to the turf pretty good. Good Mason who went hit down him. hard on that left shoulder. Yeah, he got hit to the ground pretty hard. Here's a look at it. He tough guy. Hurt that wrist is what it did, that broken wrist. Wow. Derek Mason is a tough guy. Also a very talented guy. Second down, sorry. Yep, that's good to see he's all right. Yeah. It's second down at about two. That's close, but apparently not oh, quite. They've got to go right to the 40, and they're just short of it. So here comes Urban, 33, and Gould back on the field. Now, Gary Tranquil was talking about the linebackers right here. See how they, they get up? Well, not, not this one so much, but these other two, they're right up in the line of scrimmage. Now, the offensive line doesn't know whether they're going to come or whether they're going to back out, so they have to account for those guys in their blocking scheme. The time for the first down by Urban. His mark will get him there. He got just over the 40, and then he got belted back. So the young man, the freshman, from Miami is getting a taste. Yeah, he had a, little a lot different. Of, he taste. had a lot of uh, schools after him, Keith. He, he visited, I think, six different schools, including the University of Miami, and he committed to all of them. He said the tough thing was calling these guys back and telling them, you know, I really changed my mind. But it got down to Tennessee and Michigan State, and he couldn't decide, so he flipped the coin. And Michigan State came up tails twice. He is. Uh, He's uh, here and doing a nice job for the Spartans after only one and a half games. They've got their first down as Orangeton sets them up with a single back. That's Urban. Throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Urban's going to throw it. He's got a man Carter wide open. And the old trick play works. All the way down to the Nebraska 28-yard line and a flag at the end of the play. Uh, Gia Carter got completely free. Good play by everybody on that one. Randy Crystal, face mask against Nebraska. So tack on some more. Well, what you got, Keith, is the true freshman. The true freshman on that side. Let's take a look at the line play. Tomich is 93. There's the face mask right up there. But, but the, the true freshman, number 22, Ralph Brown was in. Saw the play and came up. There's Brown right there. Now he gets back and makes the play, but they're taking advantage of the true freshman corner, and well, they should. First down, Spartans with a threat here as they give it to Irvin, and Irvin is tripped up at the backfield by number 28, Jamel Williams. He's got just a nip of him, but it was enough to destroy his balance. And he had a little bit of room, too. Yes, he did. There's a look at Ralph Brown as he goes off the field. Keith. He's from L.A., and as you know, he's an outstanding athlete, and uh, they've had some problems at corners. Leslie Dennis has been hurt. Coleman was hurt a little bit. They think this kid can play, but it's a learning process, and of course, the offenses are going to try and take advantage of a, a, a new kid out there. Hornstein back, pressure coming, and he just simply, I don't know, maybe uh, Wiston got a piece of him. He wasn't hit very much, but as he turned away, he fell down all the way back at the 27-yard line. They got two guys out here looking at him. The, the tight end, first of all, 
and the back. No, that's the tackle. Smudge and the uh, the back, and neither one of them. Quarterback has to step up, Keith. You set deep, and then the tight, and then the ends come around. Westrom comes around, and there was a lot of room for him to step up. That one was on Armstrong. Third down and 15 now with Derek Mason back in the lineup. And they go out of the shotgun. Intercepted by Mike Minter, his second of the game, and you put this one on the scoreboard. It is touchdown Nebraska. Trying to hit the wide receiver right here on a little bit of a curl. Here's Minter. Watch him now as he looks into the backfield and has perfect vision all the way. Ornstein looks that way, waits. The ball should be in the air. It's a little bit too slow. The timing is not right. Minter is gone with his second interception of the day. Nebraska scored six touchdowns on defense last year. They got their first one here today. They've already set up another touchdown. Minter has always been a Nebraska man. Remember a couple of years ago, Keith, when he uh, injured his knee and yep. out, had to sit out last season yep. or the year before? He's an outstanding player. Got a baby son. An interstate rivalry on the field tonight. National champion contender Colorado, the Buffaloes are up at Colorado State in Fort Collins. That's at 9 Eastern on the deuce tonight, ESPN2. And uh, Rick Neuheisel is going to be on at halftime with John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. Because uh, we're going to go over to older win next week when Michigan comes rolling into town. But I'll tell you what, I'll bet you Mr. Neuheisel and his boys are going to have sort of a busy night up at Fort Collins. Well, Sonny Lubick's got a surprise for him, you think? Well, he scored 62 points last <laughs> Yeah. That would be a huge, huge win for them if they could pull it off. But the Buffaloes are the Buffaloes. From the 20-yard line, it'll be Goldborn. And at three minutes to go in the first half, he's going to pick up about four yards on the carry. Nebraska's points have totaled 24. The offense has scored 10. The defense, 14. Coleman and Minter returning uh, one in Minter's case intercepted pass 84 yards and uh, Coleman went 62 yards for the punt return. Second down and six for the Spartans. Stay with the ground game. The team that is going to give Nebraska some trouble probably is a team that is big enough and strong enough just to hunker down with them and control the ball. Keep the ball. Here's a look at their first six possessions. They've had four punts and two interceptions. The two interceptions, one was run back for a touchdown and the other set up a touchdown. Special teams have scored. Everything's going pretty good for Osborne except his offense really has not uncorked a long run which you might expect. That pass tipped and sails incomplete. So on third and two, they throw it outside, and it doesn't work, and they'll have to punt again. So the Michigan State offense now is in a full sputter. Edinger in. It'll be his fifth punt of the first half. No pressure. 
good kick there. Goes out of bounds somewhere over there around the uh, 46 yard line where the Huskers, good field position, will have possession. Here's John Saunders. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, I'll be joined by Todd Blackledge as we break down the day's scores and highlights. We'll also be joined by Rick Neuheisel, the head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes, as he prepares for tonight's game against Colorado State. All coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. Vedral comes wide to the bottom of the picture with Green and Schuster in the backfield behind Frost. Tight ends had one ball thrown to him so far today. And Frost is changing the play. Here's your option. The Green, two blockers, runs through one would-be arm tackle and goes cruises on down to there's a penalty flag thrown on the sideline. Might be a late hit. He was out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. That's one of the things that Tommy Frazier, last year's quarterback, Keith, did so well is audible eyes at the line of scrimmage and always got the Huskers in the best offensive play they could possibly be in versus the defense. But Frost has been around. Frost has been at this program for a year and a half. He's been in two spring training, spring camp, so uh, he knows the system very well and is very bright. Late hit. So you add on 15, and the Cornhuskers are down at the Michigan State 20 with a first down. I don't think Nebraska needs any help. No, they certainly don't. I think they can take care of their own. On the first down, they go to the shotgun, and there's a whistle and a flag. Somebody's moving up front. So that'll back them up five. 128 to Good go ball. in the first half. Ball start on the offense. It's still first down. The 209th consecutive home sellout for Nebraska. There's true 77. He outweighs his opposition there by about 50 pounds. He's just eager to get at him. That's, all. <laughs> that's why he was moving <laughs> from the 25 down to the 20. There's a look at it. True number 77 weighs 305, and number 99 is Underwood. He weighs 250. He's one of those linebackers that had to be moved down to defensive end. Still yeah. made to play, but it was just downfield a little bit. So much has been made of the three-peat situation for Nebraska. These are the teams in college football history at this level who have won successive national championships. And the two that are highlighted were undefeated and untied, but Nebraska has done this before in 70 and 71. They weren't unbeaten or untied, but uh, they have done it. They've tried to do a three-peat and didn't make it. The uh, team that beat them in the first game of the very next season, uh, 1973, was UCLA. Uh, Nebraska, in two weeks, will go to Tempe to play Arizona State. Arizona State's playing Washington today. A lot of people think they're pretty good. This is a great graphic. Look at this. Only four active Division I coaches have ever defeated Osborne. That would have been a good quiz. We should have given that a quiz. Danny Ford, Hayden Fryer, old friend Hayden Fryer. He's and Bobby Bowden's got him about six times. Though. Second down now and ten. Probably mostly in bowl games. Yep. Pressure, pursuit, but Frost just pulls it down and takes off. Look to me like he may have gone the wrong way. I, he just uh -huh. he didn't fake. He just said, "I'm coming this way. Looks good over here." Got a first down. No, I think that was design. It's first and goal from the nine. I think it's designed because the two wide receivers on this side. You saw Frost looking over this way the whole way. So the two wide receivers just took off and were blocking the entire way. Marvin Wright knocked him out of bounds. How much, how much uh, rushing yardage does Frost have? 
Five uh, carries for 41 yards. He's a big guy, 6'3", 215. So he's not typical. He can dish it out. Calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Turns it back in, keeps it. So he's not, he's in the traffic and seemingly liking it and picking up on the play maybe two yards. Comes the line to about the seven. One minute and four seconds to play in the first half. In talking about the three-peat business and controlling things before you get into your season, I asked him yesterday, Coach Tom, if the troops had been caught up in all of this preseason hype. They've been around here long enough to kind of know the reality of life and that uh, with the, the national championship and the high ranking, uh, which is kind of nice in some ways, you're also an awful big target and you're going to get everybody's best shot. And uh, so, it, it, you know, it takes a special kind of team to, to carry that and carry it through the season. You become a season maker, your life gets a little harder. Oklahoma out of the Big Eight Conference went through that under Barry Switzer and earlier Bud Wilkinson. And uh, Notre Dame, of course, has been in that posture for a long time. The thing that's impressive about Osborne, and there's a lot of stats about all the wins and all that other stuff, but in 23 seasons at Nebraska, he has never won, in a season, he has never won fewer than nine games or lost more than three. He's won the national rushing title ten times and four of the last five years. All right, it is second down and goal from the seven-yard line for Nebraska. Amon Green, uh, he moves up into a slot position, and there uh, no backs behind Frost. Wants to throw it. Number 44, Ike Reese jumped him. Reese has been all over the place. So that's an incomplete forward pass. And this is a smart play by Michigan State on defense, and... Dean Pease, whenever you empty the backfield and there's nobody in there, send a linebacker and blitz it. A lot of defensive coordinators, when you empty your backfield, they're going to blitz it. Nice call. Nice Reese, play. Reese has 11 tackles now in this first half. Let's look at the brain trust of the Spartans. has a long time to look and then throws trying to get the ball to Vedrill and uh, it was knocked away by Ray Hill. John Vedrill was open just for a flash and Frost couldn't get the ball to him so here comes Chris Brown who says thank you very much. I'll do it for you. Brown's already got his name in the Nebraska record book. Before he's through he's going to put his name all over as far as place kicking is concerned. 24 yards on the attempt. A 24-yard try out of the hold of John Bedrill. The big tackle true is the snapper. And it's right down the highway. So the score builds to 27 to nothing with 51 seconds to play in the first half. You look ahead to the Nebraska schedule and you say, well, where in the world is the challenge going to come from? Well, they're at Tempe, we told you, on September 21 against Arizona State. That's one. Colorado State will come here. Baylor is here. But you can see, you work on down through there and you see they go October 19 to Lubbock. That can be a sinkhole. Texas Tech. But uh, other than that, uh, based on what we know right now, uh, the rest of the tough guys are here. Those sinkholes aren't any fun either. Mm -mm. Nope. Hear yeah, that story about that poor guy was riding, uh, it's down in Florida, riding along in his golf cart the other day and his earth just opened up and swallowed him. He had to crawl out, and lost his <laughs> golf cart that. and everything. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> A big divot, wasn't it? Oh, my star. You talk about big and controlling the ball. Kansas and Texas Tech, Keith, are probably the only teams like that on the schedule for Nebraska. Ball goes to 
goes on through the end zone, so Brown continues to refuse the Michigan State the opportunity to return a kickoff. I'd like to take a minute to, uh, to congratulate a couple of guys who did something special last night. Eddie Murray, Eddie hitting his 500th home run, and Brett Butler back from a cancer and scored the winning run for the Dodgers. Yes, yes. That's special. And we were told our old friend Fred Stabley had had a little bit of a heart problem, had an angioplasty, and he's home resting well, and we hope feeling much better. One of the great men around, in and around this game, Fred Stabley of Michigan State. He was uh, the man who manned the ranks in the press box up there for a long, long time. Matter now, I think, of running off the clock in the first half because the score has grown one-sided here, 27 to nothing, and it's happened off turnovers. Well, you're exactly right, and we said early that that's what Nick Saban's crew crew needed, and they needed the turnovers and not turn it over themselves. But last year, this game turned sour for Michigan State, and they quit in the second half. This is Cedric Irvin, and he cannot get to the outside. He is run down by Brian Shaw, a redshirt freshman, number 46. Nick Saban said last year he felt like they quit in the second half. I'm sure that the part of the speech at halftime, let's go out and build something for the rest of the season. The halftime score, Nebraska 27, Michigan State nothing. College football on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And U.S. Navy. Navy, let the journey begin. Stay tuned for Valvoline Halftime 96. We're back here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, where our halftime score is 27 to nothing. The Cornhuskers rolling in their outing, first outing of 1996, the defending national champions, and they have indeed been impressive. They have, Keith. They've been impressive in the special teams in running a punt back. Their defense has been very aggressive in taking the ball away and in scoring. The thing that Osborne talked, I think, probably at halftime is their offense has not been up to speed. When you get inside the 20-yard line, get it into the end zone. Well, they did get one touchdown out of the offense. Uh, that came uh, from Scott Cross as he ran it in from 11 yards. Scott, of course, is the new man at the helm with Tommy Frazier having gone. And I thought he played pretty well in the first half. I thought he ran well. I thought maybe some of his throws were a little off. Late. Uh, late. But it's the first game of the year. Mike Pullman, who's been laboring with a pulled groin uh, on this punt return, certainly looked healthy enough. He went 62 yards with it. That made the score 17 to nothing. The defense is so good. Their offense, you know, will be good, averaging 400 yards rushing a game. You don't give enough credit to their special teams. They've always had good special teams. But Michigan State has, on the other hand, helped the Huskers, too, with plays like this as Ornstein tried to force it. And Mike Minner picks it off. A second interception of the ball game. And this time, Mike went 84 yards to make it 24 to nothing. And Chris Brown added another field goal. And we are at 27 nothing at the halftime. The uh, halftime statistics shape up like this. Total yards, 158 for Nebraska, but the real telling stat is the turnovers. Two turnovers by Michigan State led to 14 points by Nebraska. And the return yardage is not on there also. The punt return, tremendous yardage on returns. Probably the outstanding player on the field in that first half was wearing number 98, Grant Whisper. I mean, he was just... He was a destroyer, so have a look at some of the things he did in the first half. That play took Todd Schultz out of the game. He had 15 tackles behind the line of scrimmage last year to lead the Huskers, and he's well on his way again this year to leading him in that category again. Nebraska will kick it off to Michigan State. Derek Mason uh, courageously playing out there with a broken wrist. He got it hit one time and had to leave the game. No, it hurts. He wants to play in this game. He 
He's in the end zone. He's six, seven yards deep, and he will not try to bring it out. And so Michigan State will come out to the 20. First down. Here's a look at the numbers. Ornstein, six of nine, uh, with, with an interception that was returned for a touch. Goulburn and Irvin, the freshman, with a few yards running, and Carter and Mason, the two wide receivers, led the receiving. If there's to be a contest of any sort, Michigan State needs to do something here to reset the tone for their team in the beginning of the second half. Nigeria Carter is a man in motion. It is Goldborn at tailback, Dwayne Goldborn, 5'9", 200 pounds. He's alternated at that position with Cedric Irvin. Irvin, who had four touchdowns last week for Michigan State, has been shut down today. Here's a look at their possessions. Um, they've had, let's see, they've had five, six punts and two interceptions, and both interceptions led to points. And not a lot of plays in any of the possessions. down and six they try to crease it over the left side to look for a moment it might work but then suddenly the door closed and number 44 John Hess took him down first half Nebraska the leaders uh, Jamal Williams the nine tackles Wisterman with four has been in the backfield all day Jason Peter with a sack and of course Minner with the two interceptions Garrett Gould is the single back, three wide outs, third down and six. Hornstein stands up, throws quickly. Nigia Carter never looked back. And uh, the pass is incomplete. And Michigan State with a uh, less than pretty start in their first possession of the second well, it's, half. It's not a pretty start. You're right, Keith. you got to remember they're probably going against one of the top. They are going against one of the top defenses, maybe one of the best defense in the country in Nebraska. Well, there are those who want to suggest quietly aside that this could be the best ever at Nebraska. If, in fact, it is. Hope that's true. Good, it's blocked. Still rolling around. Picked up finally by Nebraska. Eric Warfield blocked it. A free safety. Here's Warfield right here. He's going to come right up the middle. No, he's not. He comes from the side. <laughs> I missed that one by about six players. He just looped and came. Not yeah, ready. He did. And the Cornhuskers will go to work at the 16-yard line with Green and Schuster behind Scott Frost. This may get out of hand real quick. Schuster pops into the line over the left side and gets a couple of yards on the play. Nebraska suited up 120 players today. They had uh, something like 151 out on the field yesterday, just going through some walk-on drills and, and basics. But they've got people. But again, to point out the Nebraska offense so far in today's ball game has only one touchdown. Second down and eight. Ball at the Michigan State just inside the 15. Some of those young people in the Michigan State defense didn't know what to do. They were being redirected. Scott Cross broke loose and takes it down to the two. They might give him the one. All right, a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, Nick Saban said at halftime, before his football team or the Nebraska team even gets a chance to show their talent, and he respects their talent, his own football team is just not executing. And he talked about mistakes and turnover. That last block punt, block punt, exactly what he was talking about. He, his team walked off the field. They looked like a team that was playing in awe, Keith, of Nebraska, not a team coming out to beat Nebraska. That'll get him. That'll get big numbers on the board. Cross does the one. Gives to Green. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. the opposite side number 37 Garland the linebacker is going to hit him behind the goal line right there Green just does a nice job of carrying him just enough to get into the end zone 
Chris Brown. He's running up the points in the opening game. He kicks it into row 44. 34 nothing. Nebraska. Well, he came within the whisker of having his second touchdown of the day. But Green sticks it in the end zone, and the Huskers are cruising right now under the first game leadership of Scott Frost. You know, Keith, Nebraska scored 34 points, and if you're not at this game or watching, you'd say, boy, their offense must really be rolling. Well, their offense really is not rolling. I'm, in fact, if you talk to Osborne, I'm sure one of the things he's going to say is we need to work on our offense. Four touchdowns. Two of them have been set up by interceptions on defense, and two by the special teams. High, high kick. This time it might be a return from the two. Mason trying to get the chance. And I don't know that Derek will relish it after all of that. Husker down. So one of the Huskers uh, is shaken up on that pile up down at the 12-yard line. But they truly buried Derek Mason. It's Octavius McFarlane. That's right. At the conclusion of today's game, we will select the genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet awarding nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. We were talking about some old friends a little while ago. Carmen Coza has announced, as we have a timeout for McFarland, shaken up on the play. Carmen Coza retiring from Yale after this season. What a loss that is. What a nice man, Carmen Coza. I've known him for so long, and my goodness, he's had a great career, most of it at Yale. Nice, nice man. Keith. Didn't want to go anywhere else. Yep. Just loved it there. I think he won 10 Ivy League titles while he was at Yale. Yep. And the Fat Fox. Don Bryant is going to retire from the University of Nebraska after this season. And of course, all through the ranks of some of uh, at least a half a dozen Olympics. Uh, people know Don Bryant, and of course, for his 40 years of service here in the state of Nebraska. So he's going to go fishing. He and Petey. We'll be off to get up in the morning and then decide what to do with the day. First down from the 14-yard line. Cedric Irving is in the backfield now, trying to get the Michigan offense cranked up. And Hornstein turns. Gus gives it to Irving. And he runs right into Williams. Jamal Williams, that 210-pound linebacker, was just waiting for it. Came right to him. Watch 28, the left of your screen. Watch as he avoids the block. This is the linebacker. Watch this block here now by the fullback. He's going to avoid the block right there. It gives him an arm that slips the block and is right there to make the tackle. One of the things he does so well, that's his 10th tackle of the day. Loss is back to the 10-yard line. It is second down and 13. Gus Ornstein throwing. It's complete up at the 16. But Cedric Urban out of the backfield gets planted by John Hess. And Cedric, whose family endured and survived the massive hurricane that destroyed Homestead down below Miami, probably Nick's, thought it was after him again on that hit. Nick Saban was saying this young man, uh, Irvin, came in. He's only went 25 practices. He was working at both halfback and fullback. He's such a mature kid. He has really been impressed with this young man. Travis Reese is the single back now as Gus Hornstein plays the lead of Andrew Todd Schultz. Searches around and finally finds a little help and completes the pass to Urban. And this time, the Michigan State receivers kept working. Urban kept moving and moving and moving, and finally, Hornstein found him. Case you came early, uh, late in the ball game, early on, Todd Schultz injured a knee that had been hurt earlier this summer in a weight room incident and uh, had to leave the game. Garnett, the linebacker, is off the field. And uh, Derek Mason is playing with a broken wrist. Wayne Goldberg is in there at the tailback spot now on the first down play as Hornstein lets it go down the middle. He's got a man down there, Long, Octavius Long, and he made the catch between two corn huskers. Octavius Long, a junior from Lansing. 
He was right between Ralph Brown, a true freshman, and Eric Stokes, a fifth-year senior, to play good for 48 yards. Well, that's what they're doing, right? Ralph Brown, they're, they're finding where Brown, the true freshman, is in his first start. And they're throwing the ball at him, and I think this is smart. He had him beat, Long had him beat by five yards, had to wait for the ball. And that's, that's where they're doing their business. Hornstein gives to Goldberg. Big hole on the right side. And Wayne Goldberg in his sixth year at Michigan State. That because of injuries and just plain old-fashioned guts by Goldberg to hang in and complete his career. And he runs it down inside the 10-yard line. Here's 20. Keith Octavius McFarland strained his lower back. The trainer said they'll have him just try and stretch it out in the sideline, see how he responds. That will dictate whether or not he'll come back into the ball game. First and goal at the eight-yard line for Michigan State. Their biggest threat of the day. Goldberg in motion. Give it to the fullback, Reese. And Reese will get to about the six. You can't get involved with too much play action against Nebraska's defense down in right. this goal line circumstance. They'll just come and eat you up. They're just too quick, Keith. You can't do anything slow developing in the backfield because their defense is across the line of scrimmage. It's got to be right at them or just drop back in the pocket and throw one-on-one -on -one like they've been doing against their rookie, the freshman cornerback. Uh, Urban is in the backfield again. Winston back to throw it. Has some time into the corner. It's caught. Man is jerked out of bounds at the one-yard line. Najia Carter. But Najia couldn't do anything with it. First off, the coverage was pretty good. Secondly, he was airborne when he caught it, and the only way he could get down inside was to come down at the one. Yeah, well, they're, they're throwing on 22. That's the rookie or the freshman Brown. This throw should be thrown right there now. Should be there now. The ball is thrown too late. Way too late. But you got a good catch out of him. On third down, Urban. Nothing to it. Stopped at the line. <laughs> Jay Foreman, number 56, has played a lot in the ball game today, and he was at the bottom of that stuff. On fourth and goal, it's Goldberton and Reese. It's a good call by Nick Saban. I like this. Three points doesn't help anybody. Well, it's, it's attitude for the season. Yep. Hornstein throws. Touchdown. The pass caught for the tight end, Josh Kerr. Hornstein threw the ball and completed the pass despite the fact that Foreman decked him. Yeah, I like that call, Keith. You're getting beat on the road in the second game. This is this is attitude for the rest of the Big Ten season. You're gonna lose this game, but let's let's build some build some stuff that we can take out of here, at least, at least in the second half of this ball game. Chris Gardner, how to build Burke's hole. <laughs> On that drive, Gus Ornstein was 5 of 5 for 75 yards. One play, however, covered 48 of them. It's going to be a play action right in here, and he's going to hit the tight end coming across. Just play action, good coverage by Nebraska. Looks to his left, receiver's covered. There's two men out. That's all you have to have. Just be in front of him and drill him for the touchdown. The Spartans are on the board. 31-yard line for the Cornhuskers now, a 34-7 ball game with Michigan State getting themselves a touchdown. Regaining a, a degree of dignity here and resolve. Let's see what how the game turns. This is Green looking around for some daylight. Doesn't find much. There's pretty good pursuit by Ike Reese, who has been very busy today. Summary of the game reflected here is uh, you see Nebraska's defense and special teams have been the big story. Mike Minner with a pair of interceptions. There's three key Michigan State players uh, are a key for them. Michigan State's defense, Keith, has done a pretty good job. 
Second down and eight. Their offense has given up the touchdown. There's the flip. Outside to Green. And Green gets to the 40. That's a yard short of the first down. They snapped the ball back to Frost. He took off just like an old-fashioned tailback. And then he flips it out to Green. Number 89 is uh, Jeff Lake, who is uh, wide out. He's hobbling off the field for the Huskers, dragging the foot. He's a third-string wide receiver getting an opportunity to play, and I'm sure he's upset that when he finally does get, get on the field, he has an injury and can't stay out there. Green so far today, 12 carries, 65 yards, and a touchdown. Five seconds on the clock. Change the play. Green. Michigan State's defensive people are, are popping. They're slapping folks when they come in there. It, it looks like they're almost outnumbered, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Right here, watch the linebackers. Is there, everything's going to flow this way. This is Austin, number 25. He, too, is a true freshman playing because of injuries and academic problems for uh, Michigan State. Huskers get their first down at the 44-yard line. Federal goes in motion. Frost gets a little play action, freezes everybody, lets it go for Federal. It's going too late and should have been intercepted. But Vedrill was enough, able to get enough collision with Ant Campbell to keep Campbell from catching the ball. The ball was vastly underthrown. It was, Keith, and as you write, he was behind him. And so there was, if, if, if Frost could have got it out there, he didn't show me a very strong arm on that case because he, he needed to throw that ball maybe 60, 65 yards and probably threw it only about 50. Holbein now will be the wide man to the bottom of the picture. On second down and 10 from the 44-yard line. 34-7, Nebraska leading. A quick handoff, the up man, the fullback Schuster. And sitting there waiting for him and making the play. Courtney Ledger. Turner Gill, great quarterback here. Now the quarterback coach after having some time in Canadian football league. Third and eight. Lost. Pressure coming from the outside. They got him. So 99 and 96. 96 is Smith and 99 is Demetrius Underwood. It's the first sack, Keith, against Nebraska in over a year. They went all year last year without a quarterback sack. Well, Underwood took off anticipating, and uh, he saw him in that shotgun, and he left. He was on the dead run when the ball was snapped. Now, Gia Carter is waiting in, uh, to receive the punt of Jesse Cush. It'll be his fourth of the day. His longest has been 46. That's a pretty good one. It runs Carter all the way back inside the five. And he finds a little room and comes back to the 15. 67-yard punt by Jesse Cook. 5.20 to go, third quarter, and it's 34-7, Huskers. Former Cornhusker linebacking star Trev Alberts now plays for the Indianapolis Colts, but he wants to give something back to a state school and children. He's doing it historically. It's the first association of a one sport marketing through another with a NASCAR team. All the funds will go to the University of Nebraska and the Trev Alberts Foundation, which will help kids. And I would say this young man bleeds red through and through. Okay? And it's Lake Speed. Who's driving it? Oh, Lake, huh? Well, if it'll run, he'll 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 run it. I'll tell you that. Put the ball at the 16-yard line for Michigan State now. First down with Reese and Goldberg in the backfield. And Gus Ornstein hands it over to Goldberg, trying to get to the outside. And he runs into Mr. Eric Stokes. Just short of the 20-yard line. Total yards, Michigan State has 214 total yards. Nebraska has only 178. It's Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, who has done an outstanding job here at Nebraska. 
They got a new award this year, Keith. It's called the uh, Frank Broyles Award, and it's for assistant coaches. I think it's a great idea. Hornstein's pass is off the hands of Kerr, the tight end. Coming up next, Fighting Illini hosts 19th ranked USC. Louisville plays number seven Penn State. TCU in Oklahoma. And Duke will be against number three Florida State. So check your local listings for the game on your ABC station with the games available from your cable operator. But that new award, the Frank Royals Award, goes to a top assistant coach around the country. And I think it's a great idea. Charlie McBride, certainly one of the top assistants around. And there are several others mostly offensive and defensive coordinators around the country. Hornstein back row, look out. Clean shot by Jamel Williams. All the people over on that side are preoccupied with Jared Tomich. And Jamel Williams is having a field day. This is not fair, I know he blocked this guy right here. This is Williams. Quarterback sees this happen, you better go talk to your friends and see who's mad at you. Usually that's that's the quarterback's fault, Keith. He should know that nobody can block him. Paul Edinger out of the end zone, hits it from the two, and he got a cannon shot. Wow, he killed it. All the way back to the 35 goes Fulton. Look out. Well, that one man got just enough of him to turn him, and they bring him down at midfield. 54-yard punt. Well, he delivered the punt, and uh, it was the coverage that allowed the 15-yard return. But sometimes you outkick your coverage. Yeah, that's true. That was the good news. Yeah. So put it on the 49 now for Nebraska's possession. Mike Reese has 14 tackles to lead Michigan State. Linebacker. David Minning is in his tailback. He has the ball. He's in there behind big old number 77, Adam Crew. And uh, they can only get back to the line of scrimmage as Michigan State's people had pretty good penetration. They did, Keith. And again, you got to give credit to uh, Dean Pease and his defensive uh, staff and the defensive team for Michigan State. Four touchdowns have been scored by Nebraska. Two of them have been returned for touchdowns, one on special teams, one on interception. And the other two have been set up. The defense has played well most of the ball game. Second down and ten now. Play action. That's good to Ventral. And down steps out of bounds, just short of the 33-yard line. First down, Cornhuskers. Well, that graphic showed uh, something, Keith, that, that Nebraska this late in the game was being outgained. But the offense has really not moved the ball a lot. I mean, they've they've gotten two touchdowns from a special teams return, and then from a a punt return, I mean, from a, uh, a defensive interception. Then they've been set up inside the 15, 20 yard line and got touchdowns. So no long runs or no long possessions for the offense. Cross pass is batted down. He had number six angling in, Kenny Cheatham, and Courtney Ledger, defensive end, slapped it aside. It's like uh, Nick Saban told Lynn Swan coming out of the second half. He says, We made mistakes on the special teams and on uh, uh, in interceptions and turnovers, if we would have eliminated that, uh, this game would be a heck of a lot closer, obviously, because his defense is playing well. They spend a lot of time with special teams here. Winning programs usually do. Well, early in the season, yep. too, Keith. Special, special teams. Scott Cross breaks away and uh, will get thrown out of bounds. And the Spartans get a chance to rough up the Husker quarterback a bit. They take him out on the 28-yard line with a couple of good clean hits. A little talking going on down there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the coach, though, uh, of all coaches that I know and special teams, probably Bobby Bowden. People work at it as hard as anybody. Else. They do. Uh, you talk about these other assistants. You got Bill Oliver. I guess he moved now from Alabama over to Auburn, the top assistant. Fran Ganner and uh, Jerry Sandusky, both top assistants in Penn State. Third down, 
And three out of ten on third down conversions. Cross turns up the field. He'll have his first down as they stand him up. Uh-oh! They blew it dead. That's the old quick whistle gig. His forward momentum was stopped, and that's normally a sign, especially if a quarterback is carrying the football. Now, if that would have been a running back, they may not have stopped it, but forward momentum stops, they blow the whistle. <laughs> uh, I think it's a quick whistle. But so did Scott, the official. Said, oh, the ball is fumbled and picked up. And whoa, one of the best hits of the day delivered to Kenny Cheatham as they were trying to run a reverse. He came back to get it, and he got busted pretty good by Amp Campbell. Campbell playing his uh, first year for Michigan State, set out last year. It looked like uh, Cheatham just kind of relaxed at the last minute. Yep, he did, didn't it? You don't want to do that. You get yourself hurt. I think he relaxes right here. Whoa, I didn't see him coming. <laughs> Ball is now back at the 35-yard line where it is second down at about 26. to play in the third quarter Nebraska 41 Michigan State 7 here's Nebraska with a spread formation four wide receivers but it's Holbein down here in the right side that's going to be straight down the field on a takeoff this time Frost is going to get the ball to him he's covered but just throw it up that allow your player an opportunity to make a play and Holbein did Was open once before by about five or six yards and was underthrown and didn't get the ball, didn't it wasn't complete. He's one of those wide receivers that'll knock your hat off. Well, he's pocket. a tough kid, Keith. He's 195 pounds, 5'9. So all of the all of the wide receivers in Nebraska can block first. Monday night, Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers host the Philadelphia Eagles. The NFC matchup on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Both teams coming off wins in the first week of NFL action. So join us from Lambeau Field for the first time in 10 years. Beginning at 9 Eastern, Monday night here on ABC Sports. Did you ever play at Lambeau? I was just going to say, in my 14 years in the NFL, we played there one time. One time. And it was really a thrill to, to be in Lambeau Field. They fixed it up a little bit since then. But, did you uh, win? Yes, we did. That made it even better. <laughs> <laughs> Go in there and get your That's hat, right. get your hat bent though by that punch. It's not a whole lot of fun. Whistle stopped the play here. Somebody moving, I think. Yep, against Michigan State. Here's John Saunders. Keith, time now for the Burger King update from Rice and Ohio State. Pepe Pearson having a great day. Here he goes 25 yards for his second touchdown run as the Buckeyes are rolling over Rice. 49-7 now in the third quarter. Actually, that's his third touchdown run. Keith. All right, John, thanks. Pepe. Well, you know, Pepe Pearson and the other running back that they had last year behind uh, George, Eddie George. Get to play much. They've got some good players, I think, Keith, that nobody's heard of, and Ohio State's going to be right there 
when they decide the outcome in the Big Ten this year. It's going to be second down and 15 after that. They were penalized five yards, obviously, for illegal procedure and moved it back, and there was no gain. Garrett Tomich has no tackles in today's ball game. Westrom has been a holy terror, but Tomich, who was a first-team All-American uh, a year ago, That's, has no registered tackles, yeah, as we know. But that doesn't mean he's having a bad game. That nope. just means he's doing what he's supposed to, get up field, yep. pressure the quarterback. Whoa. Touchdown for Westrom. Salksman, number 74, broke through. Gus Ornstein saw him coming, threw it up for grabs, and Wistrom accepted the gift. Salksman is in here, and he's going to put the pressure. But Wistrom right here really does not get a good pass rush this time. Pressure comes from the inside. It's a screen. Wistrom reads it. Gets his, he's 6'5", gets his big hand up there. And that's his first touchdown of the year. Well, the defense and the, is, is, is in a scoring contest here for the season that looks like with the offense. Well, they had six, <laughs> you mentioned they had six scores last year. They've got two. Oh, that two. guy was partially blocked, yeah. but it knuckled over. So Chris Brown is lucky that one wobbled over. Here's 20. Well, Keith, you talk about streaks, you talk about uh, winning streaks. I'd love to be Grant Winston. You know why? He's got a winning streak now of 50 games with no losses. The last time he lost a game was his junior year, the third game of his junior year in high school. Now consider this. If they go on and are undefeated this year and the next year, he can come away with Nebraska uh, with a record of 76 consecutive wins. He doesn't even remember, Keith. I talked to him at practice the other day. I said, do you remember what it felt like to lose? He says, well, kind of, sort of. It was so long ago. Uh, you know, I, I know I felt bad, and that's about it. <laughs> I tell you what, 20, if they go ahead and he wins out, uh, that's going to be news, all right, but there's going to be bigger news in, uh, in the old repeats of things that everybody's been talking about. Cedric Irvin is waiting for the kick. It is 48 to 7 now. And there's been only one kickoff returned all day by Michigan State. Let's go back and look at that last play where Wistrom, the other end, here's Tomich, the man with no tackles. He's going up against a pretty good tackle in Flozell Adams. A little hold right there. A little takedown. But he's been going up against Flozell Adams, the big 6'7", 325, all Big Ten right tackle all day. So his job's been a little bit more difficult than Wistrom. Now, I'm sure that throughout the season, they're going to draw different uh, assignments, going to be tougher and easier. But today... Wistrom is having the better part of it. First down from the 20 for Michigan State. Hornstein checked again. Ball comes out. Well, he's calling that a fumble. Apparently. I didn't hear a whistle, so the big hit was from Chad Kelsey. Kelsey, 57 now, is in there for Tomich. Oh, Gus may go over there and say, hey, Todd, go see the doctor tonight, will you? Yeah. Get well. This is Cedric Urban skittering out to about the 23, 24. Nebraska special teams. I'll tell you about it later because we've come to the end of the third quarter. We'll be back with more after this message and a word from our ABC station. And so we go to the final quarter. This game between Michigan State and Nebraska with the Huskers sitting on a 48-7 lead. A game that has been dominated by their defense and their special teams people. It is third and six for Michigan State. Bernstein has been hammered in the third quarter. He gets decked again as we start the fourth quarter. It's Mike Rucker 
sophomore from St. Joe, Missouri, making the tackle. Here's a look at the numbers after three quarters. Look at the return yardage. Drop down to the return yardage. Total yardage is about the same, but return yardage, 220. That's, that's punt returns. That's interception returns. Three turnovers leading to 21 points for Nebraska. Michigan State will punt again. Edinger gets it out. His last one was a 54-yarder. This is pretty good. As Holman ducks away. Gets a little help He's run one back already for a touchdown and almost had another as he takes it back to the 30-yard line of Michigan State. Keith, as I draw a quick synopsis for you here for Michigan State, I would say that their defense has really played pretty doggone good. Their offense has turned it over and their special teams has failed. Well, the, Michigan, the Nebraska defense and special teams have had a punt return touchdown, blocked the punt, five sacks, three interceptions, and two of those returned for touchdown. Right. And offensively, and offensively for Nebraska, they only have 227 yards total offense. Scott Cross throws to an uncovered Brian Schuster out of the backfield, and Schuster steps out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Very good play action. Uh, the, the play action, the fake handoff to Green literally froze the interior people. And all of a sudden, Schuster was wide open. Move the change for another first down. And the first unit offense for Nebraska is in. And I think the reason Osborne keeps him in there is because he wants him to, to, get, to, to get some playing time. If they're not playing well, keep him in there. Ross looking around, holds it down, now throws. Incomplete. Can he cheat him? Nebraska offensively last year averaged 555 yards of total offense rushing and passing. They have about 250 total offense right now. <laughs> Terman suddenly pops into the lineup at quarterback. Second down and ten. He gives it to Green. And Green. Penalty flag. And probably face mask. On the tackle. Green didn't get much out of the play. Terman stepped up and had to, had to play in an emergency. Frazier was hurt. Beringer got hurt. And then Terman stepped in. It is an incidental face mask at the end of the tackle. So they'll tack on that penalty and move the ball inside the 10 yard line. I think Nick Saban's got to be pleased with the improvement of his defense over last year. First and goal just inside the seven. Michigan State takes the timeout. Time remaining in the game, 13.52. Well, we started out with a rainy day. We've got a sunny day, and we've got a route for the home club, 48 to 7. But you were saying a moment ago that you thought Michigan State's discipline was, was holding up despite the score. I, I think defensively they're going to take a lot out of this ball game into the Big Ten schedule. I think offensively they, they need to get healthy. They need to get some guys back, uh, the quarterback and Mason back. The special teams have just been a wonderful. First and goal, the ball is handed to Green, and that's a pretty good lick right there. Ball was out Fumbled the football, and Michigan State has it. So the Spartans knock it loose from Amon Green. They belted him, and he coughed it up. I think this is, is two things, Keith. I think, number one, this is sending a message to the rest of the uh, Big 12 that maybe Nebraska is not strong offensively for whatever reason. Uh, their line is back. The only difference is the quarterback, and he doesn't. this is not his problem. But the ball does come out. I just think this sends also a message to the Big 10 that, hey, Michigan State defensively is back. You got Bill Birkin at quarterback, a redshirt freshman from Warren, Ohio. He's the third quarterback we have seen today for Michigan State. 
Ornstein got pretty well beat up in that third quarter. Hands the ball off to Goldburn, and there's nothing there for him, and here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, the Scott Frost of uh, Nebraska has a lot in common with the Scott Frost of 1955. In 1955, Scott Frost was a standard bred trotter who won the Ham Hamiltonian and went on to win the Trotter's Triple Crown. Now, just like that Scott Frost of 55, this Scott Frost has good bloodlines, as you mentioned, and Nebraska is hoping to ride him, Keith, to a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championship. Ride him? <laughs> the other guy pulled a Soaky. <laughs> <Sulky. laughs> Second down. Goldberg almost caught behind the line of scrimmage, but Dwayne wiggled away and came across the 10 and out to about the 11. Ken Hoffman was saying that Goldburn has expressed an interest to get into his business of sports information at Michigan State. He's a he's a guy. I, I like him. It, it takes it takes some guts to do what he's done. He said early on that Michigan State needed big days from their kicking teams. They have not, and they needed turnovers for them, and they've given them away. Third down and three for the Spartans. Burke left hands it upfield, and it is incomplete. It was on the hands of the intended receiver, number 86, Gary Scott, but the freshman couldn't get it down and gripped in time before the defense knocked it away. So Burke, the left-handed quarterback, comes in, and he can't move him. Ed Ettinger, who will have a, you'll have to go sit in the sauna with his leg because he's used it today. This is punt number nine. I think he's tired. This, that's Kevin Wiggins. He probably didn't expect to play today, but suddenly here he was almost popping loose for a long return. When Nebraska fans come to Lincoln to watch football, they usually see more than just football. As a matter of fact, more than 80% of all the high school students in Nebraska will eventually come to the Nebraska State Museum here at Moore Hall to see one of the finest exhibits of elephant fossils in the world. You see, Husker fans are also Tusker fans. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> Funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> Four of five Nebraska second half possessions have started in MSU territory today. And here they go again. Terman handing it off inside to Makovica. And uh, I think the message is clear to the offensive line. Boys, we're going to give the fullback the ball. And if you don't open a hole, you're going to go to supper with spike marks up your back. <laughs> Because he's coming through. <laughs> well, the fullback has always been an important part of the option game. Uh, you've got to stop the fullback first. A lot of the reserve. says this little guy Dave Bernson insists he's called the Terminator from Wahoo <laughs> but he insists that he knows the system as well as any player on the field and I think he runs this better right now because he's thrown this ball four or five years he was a walk-on initially at Nebraska and he gets in and runs it very nicely Ted Retzlaff for the extra point try left foots it up good <laughs> And so now the points are rolling up as the Spartan defenders get tired. 55 to 7. Big C, baby, what's up? Keith, there's a recorded conversation of cave men saying, Whoa, Neliosaurus. I think I see a herd of Tybell cow rexes. And if we're not careful, those big uglies are going to step on us little uglies down here in the trenches. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what he does. Huh? He just I, runs around I, doing I, that stuff, Lynn. I've got all the elephant facts you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, they'd be pretty nifty in those days to dodge those big guys. <laughs> We got a kickoff going out of bounds. It was Dan Haydenfelt, a freshman from Des Moines, who surely didn't expect to play today. And all of a sudden, he gets a chance and he boots it out of bounds. So you'll hang his head and go do it again. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Jeep, makers of the new Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, and Wrangler. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. The United States Postal Service. And Radio Shack. You got questions? We got answers. Keith, this is the 100th year of uh, football at Michigan State, and I've got to congratulate my good friend Earl Morrow for making the all-time team at quarterback. Did Earl, he? Earl, Earl, yeah, Earl and I were. Dean Look was uh, was a consideration for the quarterback position. Well, Burke gets the taste of the sack as Mike Rucker fights his way through the traffic and gets to him. That's Rucker's second sack. He he is uh, the defensive end behind Wistrom and uh, Tomich. So he's getting a little piece of it. Iowa 21-17 as uh, Arizona's Wildcats have come back. They had him at 21-7 a little while ago. Uh, Michigan State's next conference game will be at Iowa City. Burke hands the ball away inside to Cedric Irvin. And Irvin wiggles around for about three yards. I like this young down. kid, Keith. This this young running back, I like him a lot. He's going to be good. Well, here's Nebraska. We talked about them in the opening, what they've done today. Seven sacks, two interceptions, three interceptions, two of which were returned for touchdowns. They are an aggressive bunch. Burke gets the pass away, and it's too high, intended for Dwayne Payne. And he could not do it back. So here's Edinger. This will be number 10. The 10th punt of the day. A couple other Michigan State Spartans on that all-time team. You may recall Bubba Smith. And George Webster. Well, I, they didn't bruise me Two like they did you. <laughs> I didn't enjoy my years at Purdue playing against those guys. <laughs> Low line drive might be a little room to run here. Yeah, just a little bit of room for Seven Wiggins. That's his second try at a return. 48-yard punt, a 13-yard return. Coming up next, the Fighting Illini will host USC. Louisville plays uh, the number seven team in the country, Penn State. TCU beats Oklahoma. And Duke will be against Florida State, which is ranked number three. Check your local listings on your ABC station and the games available from your cable operator next here on ABC. Matt Terman has four career touchdown passes. He's had one each year. Jay Sims, a junior from Omaha, is in a tailback, and he has the ball and just punches ahead for short game. So Nebraska working on some things here and uh, trying not to embarrass Michigan State, and we go off to John Saunders. Iowa and Keith Smith, the quarterback, is going to scramble here and do a nice job. Watch him down to the one-yard line, then has to dive this one across to get in as he has his knees cut out from under him. He's also thrown for one. Right now, Arizona within four. It's 21-17. Keith. Okay, John. Homer Smith's the uh, offensive coordinator yes, out there. Yes. Uh, and he at Arizona. Yes, he is. D'Angelo Evans is in a tailback. And uh, Matt Terman wound up uh, holding on to it because it almost came oh, loose to okay. Rico Simons. But I think this is the name you might want to tuck away. D'Angelo oh, Evans. 5'9", 220. They'll peel some of that off of him, probably. It's baby fat. He's a freshman out of Wichita. They really think he's got some tools. Yeah, but he didn't make the play then. My man Simons made the play. Yes, he did. Simons had been around for five years and waited very patiently for four years and finally has got an opportunity to play this year. Herman. Quick. Gets it away. Pass is caught. 
And number three, J.R. Edwards, the freshman from Lincoln. And he's two yards short of the first down. Uh, see, D'Angelo Edwards had the fourth most rushing yards ever in high school. He had 8,473 yards. Well, you're talking about Evans and, and Edwards, who just caught that ball. Who's Evans? Evans. Edwards is a true freshman also, so we're seeing some true freshmen give up their first year of eligibility in this ball game. D'Angelo back in the ball game, and Edwards number three. It's an outstanding play. You don't see many freshmen deep in the two deep of Nebraska. In fact, I added them up. In the two deep for Nebraska, there were there were only two freshmen for Nebraska. 19 five year fifth year seniors for Nebraska, but only two freshmen. 7.55 to play, and it's 55-7, Nebraska. All right, Nebraska will punt the football on fourth down, and Bill LaFleur is in to punt. Nigeria Carter is waiting for it. Well, everybody's getting a chance here today. Hey, that's pretty good stuff. Holy smokes. Carter all the way back to his eight-yard line. Pops out of there and a fine return out to 35, 36. So that was a pretty good punt by the youngster Lafleur. Got it to turn over and everything, and 63 yards. Mm. Move that uh, spot all the way out to the 37, where it'll be first down for Michigan State. Burke is still in there at quarterback, 6'5", 198-pound red pre shirt freshman from Warren, Ohio. He's been sacked twice. Ball goes to Tyrone Crenshaw, who's a sophomore from Pacoima, California. And he gets a taste of the big red pursuit. Here's a look at the top 25 and how they're doing. Most of the games are later. Notre Dame won on Thursday, barely. Ohio State is winning. Alabama is winning. Alabama's playing Southern Miss, aren't they? BYU has started off with a with a bang, haven't they? Oh yeah. Look out for them. Yep. They'll be up in Seattle against the Huskies. Huskies are down there in State too. This is Burke. Down he goes. Back at the 35-yard line. Give you an idea of the quality, and I know you, you, you get tired of hearing about it, I suppose, but uh, the reason that this program has been so successful is reflected in subtle little ways, but this one is not so subtle. Nebraska has averaged five, averaged five NFL picks a year since 1954. So it's been going on a while. Well, the other thing, too, is they keep their coaching staff, Keith. Uh, Tom Osborne and his staff, uh, Charlie McBride, uh, the defensive coordinator, a lot of their coaches have been with them for a long time. As has, same thing at, at, Penn, at Penn State. Their staff has been around for a long time. Number 85 uh, was blowing in there. We got double numbers here all over the place. So uh, we have to go searching around here to figure out who number 985 is. Steve Warren was in on that one. And so was uh, Rucker was right there, too. That's nine sacks of the Michigan State quarterback. That's nine. Yeah. Barely got it away. Pretty good kick. Fumble and the Spartans cover it. Down at the 30-yard line, and Nebraska makes a mistake now as Kenny Cheatham didn't look it all the way into the basket, and it got away from him. So Michigan State gets a break. They lost Todd Schultz early in the ball game. Gus Ornstein came in. They pounded him pretty good. Now uh, Burke is out there, Bill Burke. He's getting rattled around. Reggie Garnett was also hurt, in case you're just joining us. Uh, he is the outstanding middle linebacker that's led the team in tackles last year. Cedric Irvin is the uh, deep back for Michigan State. Has the ball. Comes off the corner. 
Pretty good run down to the 15-yard line. Picked up 15 yards. It'll be first down Spartan. And this kid can use all of the playing time that they can give him, whether you're ahead or behind by uh, 48 points or whatever. Cedric Irvin needs to get out there and get some experience. Don Neelan's Mountaineers are off their 2 0 start this year. You see more and more freshmen popping up uh, either in the backup role, Keith, or in starting goals because of the 85 scholarship number. This is Irvin again. Well, see, he's starting to relax a little bit now, and he's running, running better because he's running against reserves, too, mind you. Well, it's still third Nebraska, teamers. though. I mean, the, yep. the third still teamers in Nebraska. Nebraska may be starters somewhere else, the way this defense plays. That's right. Ortiz there, number 37. Uh, Charlie McBride is uh, really high on him. They've got guys that are quick at linebackers backing up guys that are quick that are playing. So uh, he's pretty excited about his defense. Irvin, maybe to the five. And he's about a yard short, looking at third down. Four minutes and 20 seconds to play in the ball game. 55-7 Nebraska. You know, Keith, you talk about Nebraska going back to back to back. You know, I was in, we were, the Dolphins were in a similar situation to that in the early 70s where we won back to back championships and then doing it three times in a row is very difficult because everybody's looking for you. It's, it's hard to do it three times in a row. But if anybody can do it, I think Nebraska has it. I think their offense needs to improve a little bit. Uh, Frost uh, didn't have a bad day. A lot of the offenses starting out the first game of the year are not going to be real sharp, and I think Nebraska offensively will sharpen up. But certainly their defense and their special teams are uh, are in midseason form. It looked like Urban was going to get into the end zone on that play. But Eric Walter, number 32, just came over, took him by the hips and stuck him in the ground. So oh, it's fourth down and a yard. Burke keeps it and gets the first down. So the quarterback slid off the tackle and got himself a first down. It'll be first and goal, Michigan State. If time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge with scores, and they're starting to come in now from across the country. Some highlights. You know, Keith, what's different about this, you look around and not many people have left. It's a blowout from the halftime, and I'd say 80% of people are still here. Inside, down to about the two, with uh, Cedric Irvin carrying the ball. Well, you know, if you, if you didn't plan to go home, if you come to stay the night, you might as well stay here. Well, that's true. This is where the party is. You're saying all these people aren't from Lincoln? I think every inch of the state is represented somewhere in some way in the stadium. Look at that. Arizona has moved within one of Iowa in the fourth quarter. Second down and goal from the two. Irvin. He's in there. Touchdown, Michigan State. Well, the youngster got himself uh, a taste of big-time football today. He had the joy and the whoop-de-doo of all the big success last Saturday, but today he got the other end of it. The kick by Gardner. Good. So at 2-11 to play in the ball game, it's now 55-14, just about like what happened last year. It's been a long, hard day. The Messrs. Mosalem, Beard, and Adams, they gave it their best. It didn't bounce their way. Now Michigan State, with its second touchdown of the day, will kick off. Paul Edinger will do the kicking. And if we can figure out who's back there for Nebraska, we'll tell you. And 
Adams, Cheatham. And he's going to put it down in the end zone. And Tom Osborne will probably bring some more new ones off the bench. Next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, the big showdown between the Wolverines and the Buffalo will headline our regional college football on ABC Sports. Michigan going to Boulder to face Colorado. Colorado's in against Colorado State tonight at Fort Collins. Number 13, Northwestern will meet Duke. There'll be other regional action. Check your local listing for the game on your ABC station or the games available from your cable operator next Saturday. Jeff Perino is now at quarterback. He's from where? Durango, isn't he? Durango, Colorado? That's right. Time called. So we've got 2.11 left to play. As we come back to Memorial Stadium, D'Angelo Evans has the carry for the Fun Huskers from the 20-yard line and picks up a couple of yards. We're just running out the clock now with two minutes to play in the ball game. You may be running out the clock, but for these freshmen, Keith, that are in here, these are big plays in their career. Getting off the practice field and getting some, uh, some real hitting. Evans again. No, it's Jay Sims this time. Jay Sims from Omaha. Hey, Evans is an upset here. He's from Wichita. I don't know. It's kind of kind of funny to find somebody at tailback the uh, Nebraska who's not from Omaha. Neil Sears is also from Omaha. 75,590. That's your total attendance for today's 209th straight seller. This is the 37th straight game that uh, Nebraska has won during the regular season. They have a 37 game winning streak regular season and 26th winning straight winning game overall. Marino keeps it. And has it batted down right back into his face by number 92, Pete Governors. Pete is a freshman from Concordville, Pennsylvania. That will bring up fourth down. The Buckeyes are having a big day, huh? Well, there's got to be a reason everybody in, 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 likes them in the Big Ten. Wisconsin. Clemson scored. Yeah. Clemson scored. Yeah. Nigeria Carter waiting for the uh, punt from Lafleur, who had a 63-yarder a while ago. By Georgie, got another good one. And Carter gets a block, gets some help, and down he goes at the 40. That was a 43-yard punt. Well, Keith, we came to Nebraska. We saw the number one team in the country, and um, I think uh, I think that is that rating is justly deserved. Yes, I do too. I don't see any reason to change it. We haven't seen a lot of them, but. Uh, I they think their offense, are pretty good. their offense will improve. Uh, most offenses early in the year are a little sluggish. Burke's pass is completed to Crenshaw. And Crenshaw out of a corner in the San Fernando Valley. He's taken down with a pretty good lick. And time remaining now as we go inside a minute at 35 seconds. That was the 12th tackle of the ball game by the Nebraska defense. For a loss. That is a lot. That pass is incomplete. That stops the clock at 11 seconds. Nick Saban will do a good job at, Penn, at, uh, at uh, Michigan State, uh, just like uh, Paterno at Penn State and uh, Cooper has done at Iowa and uh, Bowden has done, I mean, at Ohio State for uh, John Cooper. 
Uh, I like this guy. I think he's going to do a great job. Burke lets it go. And it's over the head of everybody, including Payne, the intended receiver. And you've got five seconds remaining on the clock. So your final score is, unless something heroic happens here, is going to be Nebraska 55 and Michigan State 14. As the Nebraska Cornhuskers come out of the blocks as defending national champions in successive seasons and swept up in a hype that's going to get bigger and bigger. All this talk about three in a row. No college team has ever done it. But if the college team has a good chance at it, this is probably the one. 55-14 is your final tally. Thank you very much, uh, Keith. Coach, a terrific ball game. I can't recall the Nebraska defense playing this aggressive with coming up with the turnovers they did this afternoon. Yeah, we uh, we scored so much on defense that we didn't have the ball much offensively, and I didn't think we were uh, real smooth offensively. We'll get better as time goes on. Thought Scott Frost did a decent job, but our defense played very well, and we certainly came up with big turnovers and big plays. And the kicking game was a huge, uh, a huge uh, factor in the ball game. You know, Mike Fullman made some good returns, and so uh, a lot of good things. I think Michigan State's a decent football team, and I'm a little surprised at the way it went today. Now, you, you talk about the defensive personnel. A lot of this you look at game film. How much of this was individual effort by people in your defense, like Grant Wister? Well, we've got some great rush ends. We've really got three that are great players, and the, the two guys in the middle are good. And, so we've got some some difference makers on defense. Uh, you know, I, I thought that uh, uh, Minder made some great plays, you know, at safety. And F uh, Booker's our best player at corner, and uh, he was sick today, and he still hung in there and played. So I'm glad the way it worked out. Well, you sent a very strong message to opponents who will be coming here to play you. Thank you very much. Okay, Keith? Thanks. Yeah, I would add to the message, the big red trains are coming, coming around the bend. 55-14, the final score. 